From Ride the West Horse Expo in Spokane, Washington, Rainsman presents the final part of this 13-week series with Sharon Camarillo. This week, Sharon concludes her pattern work for the Art of Barrel Racing as two of her students ride for us. So those of you who have been to the programs before this week have already been introduced to our two students. And I'm going to reintroduce Alicia to you, Alicia Allendorf. She's riding her six-year-old gilding. She calls him Big Red. When we saw him Friday night, he was heavy in the front end. He wasn't as responsive to her leg aids as he needed to be. We put him in a German martingale and snaffle to get him re-elevated from his pole to his wither, to get him to moving up from behind. And today we've introduced a new bridle to Alicia, and what we chose for Red is a little chain mouthpiece reinsman bit. There's no gag in this particular bridle, and the balance of the purchase to the shank makes it a very balanced bit. It allows it to be a lifter bit, a rating bit with the pressure on the curb, but the way the chain just lays across the tongue, it's a very acceptable bit to our barrel racing horses. Alicia's got it adjusted very neutrally. If we had plenty of time, we would have taken him into the round pin, Alicia, with this bridle and worked him as we did yesterday in a snaffle. We'd like to give the horse the opportunity to understand the pressure points the equipment offers without the influence of a rider on the horse's back. But she's a good sport and she's trying the equipment. And what I'm going to ask you to do, Alicia, is just trot through the pattern and let's reinforce the position of the cones on the barrels and what you're going to be asking your horse to do. Now you're going to look down the arena, Alicia, and you're going to see your pocket point that's going to give you the approach into your first barrel. First cone says slow down, which means sit, close your fingers, take a hold of your horse. Very nice position. Now look to the fence and see the cone on your fence, chin up, eyes forward, drive deep, and right. Very nice job. Now at this speed, if you're not happy with your barrel, then you're going to just circle on the barrel itself to reinforce the movement if necessary. And Alicia, one more time around, I want you to remember the square turn. Alicia has a little bit of a challenge in the fact that she wants to lean forward to tell her horse to go forward. And what we're reminding her to do is shoulders back and think about driving the horse from the hind in forward. Just a little mental aid and getting our horses to move out. Nice job. Now we'll extend the stride and ask for a little more movement in between. Sit down, say, whoa, feel the rate. Nice turn, look up. As you go straight ahead into your second barrel approach, riding deep, sit down, feel the rate. Very nice. Could have circled again and maybe a little application with the outside rein. And from my angle, I saw a little step out, a little wide in her approach. So that's going to dictate a little use of an outside leg pressure and the support of an outside rein application. Now let's go ahead and pick up a correct right lead right there, Alicia. Right out of your diagonal, very nice transition. And we're just going to lope him on up. Sit down, feel your rate, right, squeeze and get him moving now. This is at a lope. So, Nice big circle, right? We're a little late on that correction, and we missed a lead, didn't we? Now, I want you to stay there. Big circle on that barrel. At a girl. And we could have corrected this, I think, at the first barrel, because he didn't carry his impulsion through the first barrel, and you missed your lead going to the second, so it set you up for failure, didn't it? So as the trainer or manager, regardless of what you call yourself, it's important now that you start to identify what you're feeling and know how to draw on your skills to come back and repair it. Is he feeling pretty good? All right, let's for fun 
speed him up in your bridle a little bit. Squeeze your legs and move him up to about a 12 or 15 mile an hour gait. And you remember to carry a little bit of weight pressure in your outside stirrup. And I want you to soften up your shoulders. It looks like you're a little rigid in your shoulders, Alicia. And I want you to take the, your pelvis and take some of the uh, movement out of your upper body by utilizing your pelvis. Uh, maybe a little more outside rein, keep his head a little straighter, which is going to require you to really use your leg aids to move him up in the bridle, isn't it? Okay, I want you a little faster. Tilt your belly button a little straighter, straighten up your pelvis just a little bit, tell him to move out. Now I want you to sit down on his back, squeeze your legs, and slow him back down to about eight miles an hour, Alicia. Very good, and now you can go right on through your barrel pattern. You're in a balanced position, move him, look. Very nice, keep him moving. Very good, nice job. First cone says slow down, second one start the nose, and the last one help me with the outside rein. Very good. Simple lead change, and let's try it one more time, Alicia. Very good. Now, how many times do we circle down at our start point? I don't know. It depends on how long it takes you to get your horse settled and in, in his balanced position. Very nice. Keep him moving. Very nice. Now, drop down. Whoa. Help him into his, not a stop, just a drop down to a trot to make a simple lead change. Big circle, Alicia. And next time through, I'm going to ask you to drop him down a little earlier off your first barrel, all right? Now rebalance him by taking, him, taking a hold of him, shorten his stride, and go on through your turn. Left shoulder back, look up. Very good. Keep him moving. Shift his weight. Very nice, Alicia. Now drop down and let's make a simple lead change. Good job. Now let's go through one more time, but right off your first barrel, take a hold of him. That helps settle a horse, it helps rebalance, and it gives you an opportunity to make drop down, simple lead change back into your left lead. Whoops, he didn't take it. Big circle. Now, we're realizing that our pony's getting tired. It's hot. I can look between his tail and see some white froth. And when I see that, it tells me just a little bit that uh, he's not in shape, but those two little daughters of Alicia take up the priority of her time, which I think is an admirable priority. But we're going to find a positive place to quit him. Let's take him right on through now. Collect, rebalance, squeeze, look up. Very nice. Nice job holding your lead, Alicia. Very good. No penalty for a knocked over cone, no. That's good. Now again, he's telling her, I'm tired. I want to quit. So we've had a really nice work on him. And in lieu of pushing him past the point that he wants to just kind of quit, we're going to quit him up at the first barrel and tell him, a job well done. And whoa. Excellent. And what do we do when our stop our horses, Alicia? How about a big hand for this cowgirl? She's been a great sport. Now, she kind of went at about a 10 mile an hour speed. Obviously, this isn't going to win any barrel races, is it? But her approaches were correct. Her ability to shorten her horse's stride at the correct point was correct. Her turns were balanced on the correct lead. Very, very nice. So now she can start adding speed as she goes up to her first barrel in the approach, remembering that she's still got to ask for that rate and collection. If you feel like your horses are getting unbalanced, then you can always circle again, work on some all rights and all lefts. Once you identify the weakness, apply your skills, strengthen the weakness, and go back to the barrel pattern. <laughs> Right.
my second student, Christine Nichols. Christine is riding an awfully nice horse. This is a six-year-old mare. We started Alicia's horse out in a German martingale to help her get collected. We really worked on this little mare's ground manner. She was awfully pushy and rude, wasn't she? But she's really come along very nice. And where we've gone with her is we put her in what we call a little combination bit. She's really not up in a bridle yet to put her in a solid mouthpiece. Uh, I'd like her in a solid mouthpiece eventually, Alicia, because I think it's going to help you balance her shoulders. She wants to get a little noodly and loose, doesn't she? But this little combination bit is going to give us the resource to still be able to get control of her um, longitudinally, which is, again, from spine through the neck to the pole, and it gives you some lateral, lateral control if you need it. So I want you to trot her up and utilize your cones, and let's see what we got going on with this bridle change. And right on, right up, now right. And Alicia, because she's so green, I want you to ride her a little deep on the, on the back side between the barrel and the fence. Ride her another stride, there you go. Now look up, come on around, outside rain. And straight across to the cone on the fence. Whoa. Very nice. Now don't rush your work. Very green horse. Now let's start her nose. Ride her to your last cone. Pick up the outside rein. Look up and choose your direction. And again, we've got your approach cone sitting down towards the back fence. Straight line. Sit. Whoa. Very nice. Forward motion, start the nose, and outside ring. Easy, first cone says, whoa, 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 barrel, barrel. All this cone is here is to start your angle of approach, but you really don't want to ride all the way to it. So once you get your angle of approach, then you start looking on the ground to see where you want to ride your horse's feet. Okay, on around. And Christine, would you sit right there for just a minute? Because I think your point is a good one. And it's really, really difficult to know that the barrel's there and you can't see it. What I want to do is see that barrel in my peripheral vision, but I'm looking here. Now, once I get that angle of approach, then I can look down on the ground and see where I want to ride this horse's feet. Knowing out of my sight vision about where I want to rate in relation to the barrel. Okay, then I'm going to look past this second cone on the ground, past the third, before I look up to get my approach into my second barrel. Okay, so let's go on. You can walk on around that barrel. Get her moving at a trot. That a girl. One more time around. Nice light pressure. Good. Now, straight ahead to the cone on the wall. Straight, Christine. You're a little too wide. That a girl. And you're looking up, so I want you to circle again. And this learn to look where you want your horse's feet. Look past the third cone. Now look up and see where you want your horse's feet to go. Very nice. Just at a jog. First cone says, whoa. Start the nose, and outside rein to finish. Very nice. To the wall, remember your no start, no stop pattern. And what I'm seeing here is there is a very, very strong possibility this mare, when, when at the simplest form, has a difficult time maintaining balance in a circle. And there's no reason to start to get her frustrated putting her on a barrel pattern so we're going to introduce the all right and all left exercise. And right off the bat, Christine, bigger circle, please. Tip her nose to the left. Squeeze with your left leg. Push out a right lead. OK. Got it in front, got it behind. Now just balance her in between your hands. Very nice. Squeeze. Squeeze, 
Now look what this racehorse needs to do. She needs to learn to carry a rider in a collected, balanced position. And we're going to let you trot through just as a review, and then we're going to have her quit, and we'll make a little evaluation. We're out of horse. You see that? We're out of horse. Nice and relaxed, sweetie. Now reinforce your approach. Relationship to the first barrel. And did you see how she stepped out behind? Don't go back and let her have those bad habits. You're going to have to work, work, work. OK, that's her position. OK, got that position. Now I'm going to work on getting her to go forward. But if you let her get out of position and say, well, she's out of position, but that's OK. I got a barrel to turn. We're just going to strengthen some weak points. Move her away. Atta girl, atta girl, atta girl. Back again. Atta girl. She's the smart mare. She says, I'm going to get away from this pressure because I don't want to have to hold some balance. I don't want to have to stay straight. I don't want to have to do anything besides be fed tonight. But as far as I'm concerned, these horses are not pets, and we work awfully hard to give them a good home. So it's not losing your patience. That's very nice. Pet her. Very nice, Christine. Now walk her forward. Good job. Walk her through your turn. Very nice. Very nice. Look up to the cone on the fence. Position is the most important thing you can work on, even if it's just at a slow jog. Outside rein and leg, that's very nice. Straight, whoa. Very good. Walk her on through. Forward motion. Traveling straight. Straight on up to your approach cone. Nice job with your inside left rein, Christine. You moved her out. Hold her solid and square between your hands. Get your rate. Very nice, Christine. And on around. Look up to the wall, straight to the wall. Keep her moving now. No start, no stop pattern. Very nice. Stop at the first cone, straight. OK, now block that lateral movement. Pressure with the left leg, not the right. Back her up a step to the first cone. Move her hind end back over into position. A little more pressure with the outside rein. One more step. Get her front end to the left, her hind end to the right. Move her back up. And we'll quit her there. Quit her there. Very good. Very nice. All right. Well, you know what? That took longer than I thought it would. No plan's the plan. And there's many times that when you identify a problem, you better work it through. Because if you don't, believe me, as dumb as you think your horses are sometimes, they remember a way to get away from you. So we want to pay attention to the smallest detail. The smallest details. The quality of your training during the week. Your effective selection of equipment. The knowledge and the time that you put into learning your skill drills will certainly be rewarded with a nice finished product. Christine, I'd probably say that you're still in a German Martingale for at least another 90 days. And I'd like to see you go back into the round pen. I'd like to see you work on your skill drills, as in your corkscrew, your shoulder in and out, your lengthening and shortening exercises, your all rights and all lefts on your barrel pattern, working on keeping her balanced in between your hands, her shoulders balanced in between your reins, her rib cage in between your legs, and forward motion.
okay? Riding her forward. The little bridle that you have on, I think would be fine in another 90 days, but it's still going to take probably about a six-week transition. A week in a bridle, a week back into your German martingale, all right? You know, this horsemanship is a lot of fun. It's kind of frustrating at times. But every opportunity you have to learn something, do it. Use your good common sense, your good judgment. Be realistic in the goals you set for yourself. And I think goal setting is such an important part of competition and training. It's an important part of life in general. And we want to remind you to set your short-term goals. What are we going to get done today? Our family, our responsibility, and our employment time we're going to spend with our horses. What are we going to do this week? What's our midterm goal? And what are we going to do in our life's path? I want you also to remember that you've got to set goals that are believable and achievable. And if you're having challenges, use your good common sense to seek people that are going to help strengthen the areas that you want to grow in. Study hard, ride safe, and God bless you. Thank you, Alicia. This complete Sharon Camarillo Barrel Racing Clinic Series will soon be available for purchase in tax stores and online. The programs available on both DVD and VHS will have additional bonus footage from Sharon's Ride the West Clinic. For more information on when and where you can purchase a Sharon Camarillo Series, log on to www.rainsman.com. We want to thank Ride the West Horse Expo in Spokane, Washington, and hope you enjoyed the Sharon Camarillo Barrel Racing Clinic Series right here on Horse TV. The Sharon Camarillo Series is produced by Advent Communications. Contact us at clinictv at aol.com.